specifically what they are. So to explain that, I'll start off with a simpler concept, a concept I actually made up, kinetic forces. And while I did make it up, it uh, is perfectly valid, and it turns out to be a really good analogy. So to explain it, let's look at Newton's second law. So Newton's second law states that the sum of the forces, you've probably seen this too many times now, but the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration for a given object. So let's say we let's apply this to a train. Let's say we have a set of rail cars in a train, like so. And I'm going to call this rail car one, two, and three. And each of these rail cars then would have some kind of acceleration, right? And generally they would be equal to one another, but in sometimes uh, these accelerations might be different due to some stretching between of the cable between the trains. Anyways, so if we were to apply Newton's second law to this, we can say that the sum of the forces on the train is equal to the mass of the train. Uh, so mass of the train times the acceleration of the train. But another equivalent way of saying this is that the sum of the forces on the train, let's say we don't know what the mass of the entire train is, or maybe we don't know the acceleration of the train as a whole, is equal to the mass of rail car one uh, times its acceleration, plus the mass of rail car two times its acceleration, plus the mass of rail car three, times its acceleration and so on and so forth if there were more rail cars and you could say that it's the sum for i rail cars and of the m uh, the mass times acceleration for each of those i rail cars and <clears throat> i'm going to call this term right here these terms the thing that we're summing this is now known as a kinetic force. And this is actually a valid concept even if you didn't have a, a system like a rail car with you know boxes. You could have a car, just a normal car. It's not made up of a collection of boxes. It's just one car. And if the car is moving, we'll acceleration this way, A, we can make the car think of it as consisting of several different mass elements. And so we can say the mass of the car is equal to the sum of mi over i. So that's, there's several mass elements that the car is made up of, like this. So here's a mass element right here. I'm going to call that mi. And the same statement would apply. So the acceleration times the mass of each of those elements together is equal to the sum of the forces in the car. Now the same principle uh, applies for moments. And let's look at uh, Newton's second law for moments and explain that. So Newton's second law, let's say that we have a wheel here uh, and the wheel has a center point O and it has some acceleration here, angular acceleration alpha. Then Newton's second law states that the sum of the moments about point O is equal to I times alpha. And if we look at our definition of a kinetic force, it becomes kind of apparent that this term right here, by analogy, is now a kinetic moment. Pretty simple. It that that's all it is to it. So the kinetic term is whatever shows up on the right side of the equation. But it's not always that simple, um, and specifically that it, you have some complications when we throw in some translational acceleration. So let's go back to what a moment is. A moment is equal to r cross f. So it's a force acting on some distance r from the point you're taking it. So if you take the moment about point O, then if you have some force like such, acting at point, 
this point here uh, that is acting at a distance r away, then that is your moment. Then if we look at the sum of forces, the sum of forces we defined earlier as equal to the sum of kinetic forces. So if we look at what a kinetic forces uh, mom moment equivalent is, then you'd say that's equal to R cross M-I-A-I. -I. M I'd be actually R-I because there's a different R for each mass element. So that would actually be the sum of your kinetic uh, moments. Now, the reason that could get tricky with, uh, is because now we say that each mass element, so uh, let's say you know, this, is, this is a mass element right here, uh, and the sphere is made up of several of these, right? I mean, this is a wheel, sorry. But the wheel is made up of several mass elements, and we can just look at one of them. The wheel is made up of, is, is a collection of mass elements. So this one mass element, uh, it has mass mi, it has acceleration. Now the acceleration of this mass element is a combination of two parts. It's one, it's equal to this translational acceleration, a, and the second part of its acceleration comes from the angular acceleration. And this is equal to alpha cross r. And that r is right here. So ri. So it's got two acceleration components. Right? Uh, but in the case of the center of mass part, uh, the reason we can reduce uh, this to I alpha is that these uh, the trans tra translational acceleration components, they all add up. When we add these up, uh, when we add up the R times M I AI, and I'll just say translational, when we add that up, that comes to, to zero. And that's because the wheels, translational acceleration, can be thought of as occurring about the center of mass. So that means that because all of the mass elements of the wheel have the same translational acceleration, when you add up the it on both sides, they add up, uh, you know, the left side's going to have negative area because it's got negative R, and then the right side's got positive R, so that would add up to zero if we take uh, some of the moments about point O. So if you take the some of the moments about point O, your center of mass, the kinetic moment is indeed uh, I alpha, even if there's translation. But if we take the moments sum about a point other than point O, that's when it becomes a little uh, interesting. So let's see what that would look like. So let's say we got a point here or point B. And again, we'll have point O in the center. Uh, <clears throat> then, if we look at the sum of the moments about point B, and we got some angular acceleration about the center, and we have some translation about the center, then if there were no translation, it's simply the moment of inertia about point B times the angular acceleration. But when you include the acceleration, the translational acceleration, we have to take into account this extra term, Ri cross Mi Ai, translational. And we're going to sum this. And we're going to sum this 
across the whole cylinder. It turns out that because we can think of the translational acceleration as occurring about the center point, we can define this as R cross, I'm going to say big M because we're summed across the whole thing, uh, times the acceleration of the center of mass, or O. Actually, that, that's confusing. Let's say uh, the translational acceleration. And <clears throat> this is essentially when you would use kinetic moments. So usually uh, it's pretty simple. You just have I alpha. But when you have translation and you're taking moments about a point that's not your center of mass, this term shows up. Uh, and that's when you apply kinetic moments as you would in a textbook problem. Um, in fact, I'll actually do one of those textbook problems here and show you an example of where it shows up. So we have a car, right? So, uh, okay, let me draw that. It's got wheels and it's got an acceleration about a center, uh, 0.0. And we want to determine the normal reactions, NA and NB, when the car is accelerating at the beginning point. Um, and other forces, we have friction, right? And we have weight. And I did it, did the friction on the rear wheel because I'm assuming it's a real wheel drive. Uh, so <clears throat> to do this problem, it's pretty simple. You do some of the forces some of the moments, and two equations, right, two equations, and two unknowns, and you have a solution. Friction is not an unknown because we probably have some static friction given, so we can model it as, uh, so let's see, friction is a function of Na. Anyways, uh, so if we were to do the moments though, if we take the moments about 0.0, then it's not a pretty picture because you have to deal with three forces. You have to deal with normal force uh, A, normal force B, and the force of friction. But anyways, if you were to deal with that, that would equal uh, the sum of kinetic moments. And the sum of kinetic moments here, uh, about 0.0, is, let's see, it's the IO alpha plus the distance from point O to the center of mass crossed with the mass of the object times the acceleration of the center of mass. Okay, so alpha is zero and the distance from the center of mass to the center of mass is also zero. So uh, the sum of the moments about point O are zero. And so the kinetic moments about point O are zero. But let's say we did uh, about point B. So if we take point B, we actually get rid of two forces. And so we only have to deal with two total forces rather than three. So it's a simpler analysis. Uh, but then we have to deal with kinetic moments. And the reason is, let's see. Uh, so kinetic moments about point B is I alpha, but it's IB alpha plus the distance from B to the center of mass plus mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. And that is actually not zero. So alpha might be zero, so this goes to zero. But the distance from B to the center of mass is not zero. In fact, that is this right here. R, new color, R, B, C, O, M. And then the acceleration is the acceleration given here. 
and so you have a kinetic moment term to deal with. Oh, oops, this should be uh, a cross. But you can use this term and solve for the equation, and it works. Now I should note uh, here I use the, uh, the acceleration about the center of mass, but it's possible that I might have the acceleration about the center of mass plus an acceleration uh, that's not in the center of mass. So let's say we have some, you know, I don't know, a monkey sitting here. Can't draw monkeys. Anyways, but if you have a monkey here and it has an acceleration of, uh, of its own, you can still use that. And you just cross, you do R cross the mass of the monkey times the monkey's acceleration. It's the, it's the same principle that came from here. Um, you can just break it up. In this case, this, the center of mass of the wheel uh, would... Uh, the center of mass of the wheel did not include the monkey, but if you wanted, you can include the monkey or you can have it separate. 